Hello and welcome to another video for me on the channel you need to not only survive the current apocalypse but actually enjoy it and this video just like the previous two is a comparison test of my new cameras which are actually old cameras this is one of the older ones and it's recording in 480p at a frame rate of 30 frames per second so uh, what's the subject of this one it's going to be my health and the reason for that is that over the years, I've said a few things in the videos about my health, and I've also uh, made comments. People will say, you know, when are you going to do another video? And I'll say, well, I haven't been feeling too good lately. And so occasionally subscribers will send me private messages saying, how are you doing and how are you feeling? And so I feel like I'm kind of obligated to not just to just answer the questions that they're asking uh, directly to them, but I figure a lot of my subscribers may have the same questions if they've read the same comments or seen the same video. So we're gonna go ahead and talk about that now. Honestly, there's really nothing wrong with me, kind of. Uh, I'm a 54 year old man. Uh, stuff is supposed to happen to you by the time you get my age and sure enough stuff is happening. But there are things that are unique about me that have never been explained by a doctor. When I was very, very young, I never could run. You know, I would run, I would have fun, but when I was with other kids, I realized I really wasn't running because uh, any time they would have some kind of a race or something, I would always be last. And it would be like 20 or 30 kids crossing the finish line within 10 feet of each other while I'm still pretty close to the starting line. So it's really, my running is really, really bad. And so I've got a 54 year history of people telling me I'm lazy, I don't exercise enough, or I'm not eating right or something. Well, here we are now, I'm 54, and uh, I know guys that are 400 pounds, chain smoke, have sedentary jobs, eat horribly, never go outside, and they still walk better than me, run better than me. So obviously, uh, the exercise and diet thing is probably not related to whatever has been wrong with me since I was a child. When I got to first grade, um, the first thing that happened that kind of was unusual is that well, when I, when I was three years old, my parents taught me how to read and write. So when I got to first grade, I already knew how to do that, and my teacher was surprised. And so to show off, she would, she, on a couple of occasions, asked me to read to, to the class. And uh, the very first time she did that, I couldn't read. She said, well, you just read. And uh, why can't you read now? I said, well, she was trying to get me to read off chalkboard. I said, ain't nobody can read that. You know, I didn't realize that my, my eyes were bad. And she didn't realize it. She didn't understand why I suddenly lost the ability to read. But I, she figured it out eventually, and she, she brought me up to the front of the class, and she stood me in front of the chalkboard and said, can you read this now? Go, oh, yeah, I can. I didn't know there was words on there. You know, so the, the teacher contacted my mom and said, I think there's something wrong with your kid's eyes, which I, I guess that's how everybody finds out they need glasses. It's not really alarming, it's just that, okay, I've got a kid that needs glasses. My parents took me down there and they got me glasses. But uh, for a six-year-old, my eyesight was pretty bad. Well, later, uh, I, went, I went on summer, summer vacation. In other words, le last day of school, I left. Uh, three months later, I went back. I grew 11 inches. I grew 11 inches in three months, which is ridiculous. I don't know if anybody else has ever done that, but in the meantime, that growth spurt caused me to nearly go blind. I almost had no vision whatsoever. I couldn't see anything. And my parents were constantly having to bring me in to get my eyes adjusted and get new glasses because they were getting progressively worse, progressively worse. When I got in the Navy, they tested my eyesight. And I remember looking on the card and it said 2600. Without corrective lenses, 2600. And that means that 20 feet, like, from, I don't know, from here to that limb that's hanging down right there. That's about 20 feet. For me, that's, the, that's as clear to me without my glasses as 100 feet would be to a person with normal sight. Well, when I got out of the Navy, it, you know, it didn't take long before I couldn't see again, so I had to go get my eyes adjusted again, and they said something like my vision was 2100. And I said, well, you know, that's doesn't sound right because I know my eyes are getting worse every year and when I was in the Navy they said it was 2600 I said well the Navy has different ways of measuring eyesight based on the the amount of correction that has to be done to your lenses 
But basically, when, and I don't remember if it's 2100, 2250, 2300, something like that. They say once you get past that, there's really no way to assign a number to it because you can't see anything at 300 feet. You know, here I've got this chart. It's got the, the letter E facing all different directions. You can't see it at 20 feet. You can't see it at 10 feet. And, it, and you can't see it at 300 feet. So we just say 2300. But if, if we were to assign a number like the military does, then probably your vision is well beyond 2,200. So I've got very poor vision. Uh, and in the meantime, uh, when I joined the Navy, you know, I went to the recruiter's office, and he says, is there anything you should know? And I'm an honest guy, so I said, well, I can't run. You know, because they wanted to know, can you swim? Can you run? Can you read and write? Can you, uh, can you hear clearly? Uh, do you, you know, they, they give you all these tests. And they said, well, you don't worry about that because when you get a boot camp, you'll be able to run. I was like, no, nah, you're not understanding. I can't run. So I go to the boot camp, and sure enough, the first day that they brought us out onto the track, and I don't remember how far we had to run, but it was like a quarter mile or something. We had to go in circles. It was in San Diego, so, you know, they've got this huge, huge circle, and the Marines, whose boot camp was on the other side of this open field, the Marines would come and run that huge circle. And I was like really glad I wasn't a Marine because that, that looked so impossible. But our little circle that was inside of that, um, I couldn't run. I, I got out there and they're sh screaming at me, you know, what's wrong with you? Run, what's wrong with you? Well, I forced myself to do what I could, which you could call it running, but it was very cloggy. And once again, there were people passing me. You know, before I could even get around the track, people were passing me, having already made a loop around the track. And I'm talking about even the slowest people were just way, way, way ahead of me. And when it was done, I couldn't walk. You know, I was like, my knees would not bend. They were physically, like, frozen. So I had to go home like that, and I told the company commander, and he told me to go see a doctor. And what it ended up being is that... Uh, and I don't know, what do they call those guys that are doctors in the Navy? Not the doctors, but the, the guys that help them. They're like paramedics or something. But that's who I, they sent me to see. And the guy took my knees and he tried to bend them and I was screaming and he just kind of rubbed it. He said he could feel bone on bone, which I, I don't know how an 18-year-old uh, corpsman is what they call them, Navy corpsman. I don't know how an 18-year-old corpsman or 20-year-old corpsman could diagnose me. But that went into my permanent record, and they sent me in to see some officers. They're in uniforms, fancy uniforms, a lot of shiny stuff on it. And they made me sign. They asked me, do I want to stay in the Navy? And I'm like, yeah, I want to stay in the Navy. She says, well, there, you, you're not qualified to be in the Navy with this condition, but we would like you to sign some papers saying that you recognize that your, your medical condition could cause you uh, be hazardous to your time in the Navy. Like if the ship is sinking, you may not be able to get to a lifeboat station in time because of your your knees. And I don't really know what was in the paper, but I suspect it was something like they were giving me an opportunity to get out of the Navy as permanently disabled with some kind of a, a disability check. But they didn't say that. They just wanted me to sign this big stack of papers I signed it because I wanted to stay in. And I didn't know that they, they did stuff like that for people. But uh, when I... Uh, when I got out of the Navy, and they always, every year, they had this run, and they'd say, you have to make the run, or you don't get to go on leave, or you can't go off the ship, or you can't do... And I would go up and I'd say, I can't run, and they'd make me run, and I'd hurt my knees again, and then I'd have to, you know, go see the doctor, and I'd get out of it. But when I got out of the Navy, they give you a stack of papers, just like every single time you do anything. And one of the things in there was an invitation to the VA. It said, I remember it said right across the front, welcome to the VA. And so I went, within a few days, I went to the VA, I turned in all my papers, and I explained to them that I'd had this problem with my knees and my back, because my back had gone out, you know, as soon as, I guess I'd been in about less than a year. And uh, right after I got on my first ship, they were making me carry all this heavy stuff, and my back went out, and I was completely laid up with that for a while. So uh, when I got to the VA, I uh, gave them all the papers, and the guy at the desk said to fill out some forms about insurance. I said, hey, man, I'm... I'm a veteran. I'm here to get my medical care. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm not here to buy, you know, pay. And he goes, well, you got to pay. This is a hospital. This is not a freebie, which is a lie. But they've got, it's like when you get out, if you're in the military, you ever got out of the military, 
You may not see him before you get to your first doctor. You got to go through a team of lawyers because there's this whole uh, choreography that they've got set up or you tell them, well, here's my paperwork. And they say, we are so sorry, sir, but we have no records of you ever being in the military. And that's not unique. Everybody I know who's ever been in the military, ever applied for any kind of uh, their benefits, gets a letter saying you're not in the military. And then you fill out all kinds of forms. You contact your congressman, all that junk, and they go, oh, yes. We found out that you were, in fact, in the military, but you weren't in the Navy. You were in the Army. They just have this goofy, goofy system to make people not get their benefits. And it actually worked for me. I just walked away. I said, I'm never going back. But over the course of time, my health continued to deteriorate, and I had no options. I had nowhere I could go for, for medical. So I went back to the VA, and I fought them, and I got in. And when I got in, uh, they did put me on, they did give me disability for my knees because it was in my record that I had permanent disability. And a year after I put in for a permanent disability, they sent me a letter saying, congratulations, you're cured. And I mean, it was like right at exactly one year to the day, 12 months, 365 days. They gave me a letter saying, you're cured of your permanent disability and you will no longer be receiving any benefits. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, when you're in the VA, they do the whole physical routine and they told me I had diabetes. So it was entry level diabetes. It wasn't like they were going to cut my feet and my, you know, I wasn't going to go blind. They weren't going to cut my feet off. I wasn't going to go on dialysis. But, and I don't know what the numbers were at the time, but I think it's like my blood glucose level was at 150 and, and the standard may have been 125. Anything over 125, you're diabetic. And then they tested my uh, A1C, which was 7.1. And at the time, the, the threshold was 7. So it was only 0.1 over, and I'm not really all that worried. They gave me the meds, they gave me the tester, I brought it home, and I messed with it for a while, and I couldn't really see where I was significantly bad enough to even concern myself with it. And, uh, you know, but I'm, I'm glad I finally got some free medical, which was supposed to be mine, because you're gonna, you'll find out that when you go in to, to do anything with the government, you're going to sign this, a stack of papers that big, telling you, spelling out everything that you're responsible for, and everything you're going to get in exchange for carrying out those responsibilities in that that package. So you'll do your whole six years, and uh, you'll do everything that's in there because you know that if you don't do it, you go to jail. But then when you get out and it's their turn, instead of just automatically them doing the stuff like you automatically did stuff for them, you got that team of lawyers. And every one of them is there to explain to you why, even though you were promised all these benefits, Here's the reason why you're not going to get them, according to law. And uh, anyway, uh, long story short, uh, they, uh, they, they were giving me my medical care, and one day I get a letter saying, you got a bill. Okay, I've been going to the VA for years. I've never gotten a bill. This is just goofy. I'm not, not worried about it. Well, uh, then they gave me another bill and another bill and another bill, and the bills were getting bigger and bigger and bigger until it's like $350, and then I get a letter saying, the Department of Fiscal Responsibility is taking, is going to take money out of your Social Security check every month, which I couldn't live on even a penny less, and they're gonna take like $30 a month out for t two years, because there were fines and fees and penalties that went along with the money that I hadn't paid to the VA. And I went down there, and I could not find anybody to help me. And so, to keep them from initiating this lean against my income, I went ahead and paid the money that I didn't have. So I stopped going to the VA. I'm like, it's a scam. It's just like every other scam that the, the military has ever pulled off is a scam. So <clears throat> I, I get this letter three months later saying, we're very concerned about your health. We can find no records of you anywhere in the VA system checking your A1C and your blood glucose level, and this is dangerous for you. You could lose your sight, you could lose your feet, you could end up on dialysis. Please come to the VA. Three months later, another one, three months later, and I just throw them away. I'm not interested in going back to the VA. I'm not interested in their drugs. I don't want anything to do with them. They're just scam artists. If someone lies to me about one thing, they lie to me about everything. And as far as I was concerned, I wasn't diabetic because the liars who told me I was diabetic just wanted to steal my money. Well, um, I got a ticket for not having an expired tag. I was scared about what it would cost me, so I ran straight to the courthouse, gave them my paperwork, and they gave me a new tag, but they couldn't give me my disability tag. 
So, and they said that I couldn't get it without a letter signed by my doctor. I'm like, well, I'm not going back to the VA. But after, you know, six months or so of not being able to park close to buildings and oftentimes having to go home because I just couldn't see myself getting out and walking that far to Walmart, I, just, I went ahead and called the VA and I made an appointment. I said, I've got to come in and get this letter signed so I can get my tag on my car renewed. Thing is, they wouldn't see me unless I got blood work. And when I got my blood work, I went to see the doctor. They said, what do you need? I said, the only reason I'm here is to get this letter signed so I can get a car tag. And uh, the nurse, let's see, I don't want to say the wrong thing. She said, do you realize that your diabetes is about to kill you? And I'm like, no, I certainly did not realize that, but thank you anyway. Well, anyways, here's the numbers. In case you remember, I said the threshold for A1C is seven. My th my numbers were 11. I was 11 point something uh, for my A1C, and then uh, I think it's like 125 is normal or that's acceptable. Any like 126, you're diabetic or something like that. And my diabetes, my sugar gl blood glucose level was at 386, which is really high, and it is dangerously high. But uh. When I saw the doctor, he said, we're going to get you up on, up and running on your diabetes medicine again. I was like, no, you ain't. And he said, well, you know, you could, you could lose your sight. And I said, if I could die, I don't care. I have no money. I can't be constantly scammed by the VA. I have no money. I can't buy all your drugs. He said, well, you're not supposed to. You'll, it's free. I promise you it's free. I said, no, it ain't free. I got sued. You sued me. You sued me and took my money, and if I hadn't given you the money, you were going to sue me for more by taking it out of my Social Security. So he contacted uh, someone called Patient Advocate, and that's how the VA works, is that once you're at the bottom where you, they have taken everything they can from you, then they let you talk to a patient advocate. He fills out some form, takes about 30 seconds, and you're back in. And that's the way it worked. said, you don't have to pay for drugs any, ever again. But... Every year when they send you this paper, fill it out. Make sure to fill it out. He said, they never send me a paper. I fill, I fill out everything they send me. They never sent me anything. He said, well, just whenever you come in, fill out one. So now it's like if I go in there and get some work done, I fill out the form. And if I go a week later, I fill the form out again. And all it is is a thing saying, I promise I don't make any money. It's called a means test. So if you're in the VA system and you haven't filled out a means test lately, you might want to check with them about filling one out. Well, uh, the doctor, once I told him, okay, I'll take the meds, he prescribed me oral medicine just to try, just to see where I'm at. They want me on insulin. I mean, this is not something new. It's been 13 years I've been diagnosed as a diabetic, so it's, we're at that point where I should be on insulin. But uh, anyway, we've got a, one of my subscribers is a registered practitioner, medical practitioner, natural healer, and he's helping me with my diet. and. Hopefully, uh, the, the things that I've been giving up and the things I've been doing will keep me off of insulin for at least another maybe five years, hopefully. But if it doesn't, you know, I haven't got a problem with injecting myself if I have to. I, I really don't want to. But the man sent me to get an MRI because I said, you know, it's just a scam. Everything at the VA is a scam. When I first came here, I was terminally disabled from the Navy. A year after I got on the disability, I was sent a letter saying, congratulations, you're cured. And he goes, oh, isn't that wonderful of them? I want you to get an MRI. So I'm thinking that this doctor is going to just fill out a few forms saying his MRI says his knees are roint and his back is roint. So get him back on his disability. But we'll, we'll see how that plays out. Uh, I don't put any hope in any of it because uh, everybody thinks that they're able to fix things because they work there or they've been there a long time or that but it's the system is choreographed from the from beginning to end everything done at the VA is to keep you from getting your benefits to keep you from getting any kind of money and I know there's a lot of people that are on VA disability or military disability if you look at them the vast majority either got injured so bad they couldn't stay in or they got so you know so sick they couldn't stay in or they did their 20 years and got out because when a person retire from the military, their check is set. The amount of money they can get is set. So if they get 100% disability, all they're going to do is give them the same amount they were going to give them if they were disabled, but tax-free. Ta disability money is tax-free. Retirement money is not. So a lot of these guys that got 100% disabled on their tag, all that means is they don't pay taxes on their retirement. 
Oh well, uh, that's about it. This was just supposed to be a test of my new camera. And uh, if you if you're interested if you're watching this video because you're interested in seeing the quality of the video coming out of the camera, go back and look at the beginning of the video. I live out in the swamp. It's been raining. When the batteries heat up on these things, it puts a lot of humidity onto the inside of the lens. So it evap the batteries cause the humidity inside to evaporate. The lens causes the humidity to condense. And so the beginning of the video will always be clear. The, the end of the video may be a little foggy. But I think uh, an easy way to fix that is anytime I plan on doing videos, I can just put a, a put the camera on a heating pan under a, on a heating pad under a ceiling fan, get all the humidity out before I even start. Oh well, there you go. That's what's wrong with uh, sustenance and covering. I'm gonna live to be probably 73 because everybody in my family lives to be 73. That means I'm 19. I got 19 years left, and uh, I don't see myself being cured of any of the junk I got because uh, to date none of it's even been you know no one tells me why my eyes are getting worse or why I can't run uh, they're telling me I'm diabetic but you know uh, my dad was diabetic most of the people in my family that have had diabetes never really took care of it right and they still live to be around 73 and I am going to take care of it so don't worry about that I'm going to do everything I can to take control of my diet uh, exercise isn't a, an issue because I do come out here and walk around in my woods every day and uh, oftentimes with some pruners you know pruning trees and so uh, you know I, 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 I see myself as doing better with my health than most of my relatives I've never smoked which is kind of unique to me I've always eaten a lot of fresh fruits and vegetables uh, you know it's, I'm not like a guy that just opens cans all the time I'm a prepper so I do open cans but if I uh, you know it's just because there's I'm not a guy that buys cans and then throws them away after so long. The only way they, that the cans in my prepper supplies get used is if they go through my body. Anyway, that's it. We'll see you. And as always, if you don't want to survive, don't listen to me.